teach them to love one another that heaven might find a place in your heart cause she let you down and I know Welcome to Conversations with C News. I am Dion Batiste. Good afternoon. Today's guest is a man of many talents. He's a singer, songwriter, a radio personality and TV host and he's here. Devon Matthews, good afternoon good and afternoon. welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I want you to start by telling me. I'm sure you expected this. I ready for anything. <laughs> All right. You're not paying any mind for Brace yourself. Right. Tell me a bit about this court case. Um. Well, the court case was um, you know, been going on for well, was on for about three years. Mm -hmm. Um, saying that myself and my producer by the name of Anton Several uh, took lyrics from a, another person's song. Um, the words were no worries and it was a false uh, argument because you know I guess it was basically based on ego this is my thing I think it was basically it was based on ego and to see what could happen it was the first of its kind in any country mm -hmm. so it was historical we were, we were part of history there um, it's alleged that as I said the, the people said that we took part of their song and the thing is, I didn't even write the song. The song was written by Pretty. And they put me in court saying that I stole the song. So that was the whole bacchanal that went on. Um, they decided to, to write every radio station saying that we stole this song. The songs were two different songs. Like everybody who asked for the, to hear, I was like, oh, you be the judge, you know, listen to the both songs, so you be the judge. And the only thing that was similar in the song was no worries. Why even no worries? And that same year, it had so many songs with no worries in it. And the whole focus was me. So I just, in my eyes, um, it looked like it was just something to try to, to bring us down, which clearly we came out victorious after three years. Were you surprised by the ruling? No, I was. We had a song even written called Vict Victory since December. Because we, we expected, the, from the start, everybody who listened to it, we expected victory in this court case like from the start but um you know Trinidadians they were well you know us people they were all saying yeah they're gonna them take this song blah, blah, blah. And the early radio stations they stopped playing the music and we read that was the most like hype I got that season for a song that it didn't even get a chance to even breathe um but the good thing about it you know with the court case the the, the whole marketing the other side was doing a lot of, um, you know, posting pics and sending messages and all these things. And we weren't, we weren't on that. We say, you know what? When we win, we're gonna put up our picture, and that's what we did. We we expected to win from day one. That's why we had no doubt. We, you know, our minds, you know, our hearts, what's gonna take place at the end. Right? So now that the High Court has issued its ruling, what is the relationship between your team and the claimants? Well, definitely. Um, there will be no relationship. I mean, clearly, I just being real. I go and mama guy here yeah? mm -hmm. and say, yeah, I'm going to be best of friends because these people put me through a lot of stress and a lot of expense for nothing. Um, I'll be a fool to go and play. I ain't going to play as the most loving person and go and try get down the thing and hug up and love up. And <laughs> it ain't going to have that. Just being real with you. Because it was an experience and I learned from it, you know, how this industry or how people could think of what people will be willing to do to bring it to bring it down um i remember the the guys actually saying devon i mean we are going to end your career but the good thing about it it built it because i remember years ago people couldn't spell my last name and i saw my name spelled properly for this whole i was so amazed i was devon seals for a while you understand i'm a big up devon seals but everybody's calling me devon seals for a while but until this so much things happen um and you know with the music as well and I was just expecting victory from the start. Okay, 
what do you think younger artists could learn from this experience that you had with this specific case? Definitely, you need to be careful. You need to watch who you have around you in this, this business. You need to, as well, gain as much knowledge when it comes to... Because I, I learned a lot when it comes to the situation with, you know, copyright infringement. And that's something that I'm thankful for because certain things I didn't know about, I learned because of the of the case now, like the eight bars and all these things. And the, 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 the fact that they were trying to, to push saying that No Worries was an original tomb built by these individuals, which is a mad. That's like me saying Jump and Wave. Jump and Wave doesn't belong to Super, Super Blue. Mm -hmm. You understand? Um, and all these things. So that what went on in that. I think that artists nowadays, now you need to be aware of who you're working with, trust who you're working with, and gain as much knowledge when it comes to this business. Okay. You seem to be having a pretty good season. Congratulations yes. on making it into the semi-finals for the Soka Monarch and the finals for the Young Kings competition. Thank you. Tell me a bit about the journey. Oh, well, the journey, the journey had a lot to do with the case as well. Okay. Um, funny enough, um, the journey, the song, the last year, um, around June, I lost my father. Um, he passed away. And that was my, my right hand, my backbone. I'm my only child, so that, they were like, he's like everything spoiled to me. Boy. Yeah, I'm a proud, spoiled child. <laughs> I ain't shame about it. Yeah, but real talk. Um, so the journey, you know, was just a vibe driving and thinking about all the things that I go through and all the things that I have to be thankful about. I know people just think, that's like the court case. Um, that was an obstacle, not to, to stop you, but to slow you down. You understand? It just, it not to stop you, just to make sure, just take your time, cross the obstacle, and that's what I did. Um, and I remember even in the, the, the case, you know, people were saying, um, boy, you know, we have to be able to write a hit and all kind of thing. They go, oh, can I talk? That's like, okay, good. And this song came to me. And it really was just me driving and I just think about this idea, freestyle and thinking about where I was before and where am I now. Um, thinking about that and saying, no matter what comes, you know you will make it. Obstacles will come, as I said before, not to stop you, but just to slow you down. And people have stopped with certain obstacles. I gotta stop and give up. I see this court case and frustrated and give up on music and think, but no. Um, who, who am I pleasing? Am I pleasing myself by doing that or pleasing the people who are trying to bring it on? And I think everybody should be like that, have that thinking, you know, when it comes to situations in the world that why stop in what you want to do? I mean, as I was telling an interview, um, I was on an interview in the same building. I was like, I used to work here. 98.9, this is where I started, thinking I would have never reached further from here, overnight for two years. If I had listened to people, and that's how the whole song came up, because I remember people saying back then, my voice was too thin for radio and all these things. So when I was doing that interview with Jojo, I was like, yo, this is where I started, you know? This little building here, I was working here overnight. If I listened to them, I wouldn't have been 96.7, I wouldn't have been Tempo, I wouldn't have been Synergy, I wouldn't have been here, if I had listened the people and that is the whole thing about the journey um it's just to believe in yourself and that's what i did believe in myself okay um how did you come about adding ella and for the mix i wanted to get a combination um a lot of people said they want good on clips or rose road but if you get clips or rose and then i was like you know everybody gonna run on clips or rose and so said so done that was while after i see marshall come out have some other combinations as well she was coming out with and was on air, I was thinking about a vibe, you know, um, who's the next person? People started singing Sandra. And somebody message requesting bring down the power. And I was like, that is what I get, boy, where are we finding that? Go on to Facebook, Facebook. <laughs> and we started to search. And I think in all the time, I remember, well, Fian and they say, well, we'll have to find her. Fian and them say, well, okay, well, she don't do combinations so often. She don't do combinations at all. She think, think, think. I was like, Fian, you had to get her. You had to get her. Fian sent all the calls, you know, Crystal as well. And it was ring around, like, just going around for a whole month trying to get her to come to meet. And I always thinking to myself, she, you know, living somewhere far, maybe deep, deep south or wherever. <laughs> Yeah, so that's just in my mind. I think she will be, you know, knowing how she's so spiritual and, you know, that vibe. I think she'll be living somewhere real far from where I am. Then I just get fed up and say, yo, because the song's done. And I just needed her voice to, to, to listen to me and be on the song. And I said, um, 
Faye, give me the number. Yes, you see this thing I go and call. And I call. And she said, you real bold face. I never forget. Is you real bold face? And I was like, yeah, because mom's been waiting. I need to, what's going on? And this is our first meeting. And she's, so I was like, mom's, where you living? And she's like, living. When she told me where she living, I was like, that's like five minutes away from my house. Right there? So I said, you know, right there all this time. And I just went across and sang it to her. And she was like, I like it, I like it, I like it. And she'll do it. And I was just happy from there. And she came one day and just cut it. And it was just an amazing experience. So, actually be in the room with her and the things that she taught us in that little short space of time with music and where it started and all these things it was just really really good are you satisfied with the response to the song i'm amazed by the response to the song i mean the when you do a song you know you know you think about at that point in time i was thinking about difference out of the box you know that real sending a message i mean i was going through the situation with my father and I was just thinking, my mind was in somewhere else, you understand? And I said, let's do it, let me see what will happen. Because the song is a real, you know, everybody will listen to it. It's not like the normal up-tempo, jump and weave. It's a positive song. Okay. And to hear what people, the feeling, like, it was one of the songs that I, I did that I started to send to people before I released to hear what they say. You know, and people, everybody had the same feeling, the pause raising and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, cool, cool. Let's go and we put it out. And I was just amazed to see people, you know, in all the fetting and to, to celebrate with a positive song. As I said, not no sexual song to cock up and think, mm -hmm. but to see how people celebrate and enjoy it. I mean, to this day, I'm still amazed with it. Did you find it difficult to be taken seriously as an artist? No, not necessarily. No, never really. Um, the thing about it is what you put out. And again, it's what they believe. A lot of people, you know, will do this music thing and don't really, they have like a slight doubt, which I think could actually keep back anybody. Once you have that slight doubt in anything that you do. Um, and that's what I did. I mean, I went in there. I mean, before radio, I was actually doing music. I was more into R&B and singing all those shudup shudup and okay. all over the phone and all kind of thing. That was my thing now. You understand? But I realized, yeah, that I'm making I'm making it in Trinidad, boy. I think I'm making it. And I just started to sing. So, I mean, I was in cadets and in cadets every, at the end of every camp, we used to have um, concert night, which is like a big thing. That's when you go in and perform. And, it, and we, like, my team was like, bam. You understand? We hitting tables and we singing and we jumping up and it's like full performance. All we was missing is fireworks back then. And I said, this is what I wanted to do. And, you know, people who, who trained me back then will say, yeah, this is what Devon always wanted to do. And I wanted to just make sure people love the music, accept it, and spread it. And I mean, the thing about it, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, persistence is a serious thing. I mean, I've been doing it for over 10 years or so, mm -hmm. seriously. And now I think people look at me in a different light because of the song and a different fan base. I mean, we have people from all over the world, all different ages liking the song because I always like to dabble in the legends. Before I did Lord Nelson, I did some with Baron, I did some with Alison Hines, and I always liked that. I even did a remix for Roaring Lion, um, Full Time Something, that Miss Dorothy went to be that song. Mm -hmm. and. I just always liked dabbling because I always said, as I said to Ella, I was like, what was the formula you all had back then to let music last longer than Carnival? And with this song, The Journey, I believe that this song ain't gonna stop now. And now, The Journey now starts with it. Is it safe to say then that you're living the dream? Definitely. I think the court is working mysterious ways. I think the court case had a lot to do with it um, because of the the talk and the, the lashes that we we got over the years uh, myself and Anson um, all these things that these obstacles that came we use it to build the product that what is today and what are some of your favorite songs for the season my song Chiga song <laughs> um, uh, keeping it in the family yeah I like of course I like I, I love but I'm a I love I'm a power I love power. Mm -hmm. So I love the uh, the rhythm with Fian, Bungie, and even Jai on it. Um, I like, of course, MX Prime. I like, I love the, the, the journey of MX Prime. Like I was saying, off, 
off camera, I was like, yo, look how amazing it is now. Yesterday, he celebrated his birthday. I mean, I'm just seeing that so much people saying happy birthday to MX Prime. And last year, it was totally different. And that is how life is. I mean, and he's a guy been doing his thing before me. But he never gave up. When your time come, your time come. So I big up to MX Prime on this song. And amazing track. So I like his song. Um, what's I like, boy? Right? Say me already, right? Yeah, exactly yeah. like that. <laughs> okay. um, so much songs. So much songs. Beyond the radio, it kind of, you know, you listen to music like That's right true. you, but those yeah. are the songs that I really like. Okay, what can we expect from you for the rest of the season? Oh, definitely. It, as I said, the journey I'm bringing out, uh, Ella and Delta, you know, she was in Mocha. That was her mm -hmm. first fact ever. Never? Okay. And I was like, yeah. So I'm trying to break out to come out, and she's really enjoying it. And I, my mission is really to highlight her because she's a, a person who went through a lot. I mean, I even remember playing at a party and people saying that she passed away. And I even remember releasing the song. People saying, "How oh, you get that's a sample?" Um, I thought she did. Oh my god! So I want to make sure and highlight. I want to do a lot of things. I want to do a video with her. I want to even work on a foundation with her when it comes to African drums and stuff. And that was that's my mission to give back to her and get her up and pumping. And she has a lot of music to come. Well, you should encourage her to come and be interviewed by me. Yes, definitely. I'm going to work on that. All right. Well, Devon, thanks so much for coming. Thanks for sharing a bit of your Thank story you. with us. Mm -hmm. I wish you all the best for the rest of the 2017 season and beyond. Thank you very much. And with that, we end this episode of Conversations with C News. Until next time, I am Dion Batiste. Good afternoon. We build in levels, highness and triples. Hey, y'all, don't show me down. I see you in it. Sun was